really are the best. Greetings, stranger, and welcome to Platinum Trophy Review. So, get your passport ready, practice your Spanish, and donde esta la biblioteca, as we trek through this week's game, Resident Evil 4. So, what is Resident Evil 4? Well, Resident Evil 4 is a 2023 survival horror game developed and published by Capcom. It is a remake of the 2005 game Resident Evil 4. Players control the US agent Leon S. Kennedy who must save Ashley Graham, the daughter of the United States President, from the mysterious Los Illuminados cult. The remake builds upon the original game with an updated plot, new visuals, characters, cast, and improved gameplay. Resident Evil 4 has a total of 40 trophies, 4 gold, 10 silver, 25 bronze, and of course, one platinum trophy. Resident Evil 4 has various trophies associated with difficulty, 5 to be exact. Complete the main story on standard or higher. Complete the main story on standard with an S plus rank. Complete the main story on Hardcore or higher. Complete the main story on Hardcore with an S plus rank. And complete the main story on Professional mode, which is the hardest difficulty. Now for the good news and the bad news. If you jump straight into Professional and complete the game, all trophies associated with completing the game on a certain difficulty will unlock. However, you will still need to go in and play each individual level for the S plus rank. That is the bad news. FYI, there are 16 chapters in this game. But never fear, as there are accessories we can unlock during our playthroughs that will make this nightmare much easier. But more on them later. As per the norm, when it comes to Resident Evil remakes, you are looking at several playthroughs to be able to obtain this platinum. So let's go over the best way to achieve this. Your first playthrough should be on the easiest difficulty, Casual. Here we will strive to gather all collectibles and knock out as many miscellaneous trophies as possible. Also, during this playthrough, stock up on all first aid kits and store them away. We are going to need them for later. Apart from finding them randomly, the merchant also sells one per chapter, so buy, find as many as you can and store them away at the typewriter. We are going to deviate from the playthrough section for a bit and focus on some of the trophies you should strive to unlock in the casual run. There are five trophies linked to collectibles and the collectibles can be divided into two types, treasures and clockwork castellans. There are files in the game but it is not necessary to read them all for any trophy. Revolt against the revolting is to destroy a clockwork castellan and Revolution Windup is to destroy all of them. There are a total of 16 scattered throughout the map. Destroying all of them will unlock the accessory Primal Knife. This is the best knife in the game and when you spend an exclusive ticket on it, it will make the knife unbreakable. The next three trophies are associated to collecting all, and I emphasize all, the treasures in each section of the game in one single playthrough. Bandit. Obtain all treasures in the village. Raider. Obtain all treasures in the castle. Burglar. Obtain all treasures on the island. As previously stated, all treasures for a certain section must be collected in a single playthrough for the trophy to pop. Every time you get into a new section, you can buy a treasure map from the merchant where all the treasures will be shown. The guide I used for this will be in the description. The merchant, apart from being an iconic NPC and selling us useful weapons and upgrades, in the remake will now give us requests. These are the blue pieces of paper that will be on a table or pinned to a wall near him. When we complete a request, we will get spinels. These can be traded in for other upgrades, weapons, but more importantly, exclusive tickets. These tickets unlock a weapon special skill to give you more bang for your buck. Completing the merchant's request will unlock two trophies. Nice one stranger for completing a request and jack of all trades which is to complete all requests. Quest. On behalf of my <laughs> good stuff stranger. 
Ooh, what you buying? In later runs, you can complete requests beforehand, making you save time when it comes to backtracking for some of them. Gun Fanatic is to obtain all weapons, and believe me, there are quite a few. The majority can be found in game, but the last two are locked behind completing a certain difficulty. These two are the Chicago Sweeper, which is unlocked by completing Professional Mode and obtaining an A rank, and the Hand Cannon, which is achieved by completing Professional Mode with an S plus rank. However, since the launch of the Mercenaries mode, obtaining the Hand Cannon has been made extremely easier. Just get an S rank on all three maps to unlock it. When you use an exclusive ticket on either of these two weapons, you unlock infinite ammo, and we will need this for the upcoming runs. This trophy will pop once you're in game and at a typewriter. Just sort the weapons into your case. To end on the weapon part, you will eventually see that the merchant is selling a rocket launcher. Rocket launcher! This is a single use weapon, meaning you can only shoot it once and you cannot buy another one. So I would suggest using it on the boss fight that is giving you the most trouble, because it is literally a one hit kill. FYI, if you're thinking about using it on the Krauser fight at the end of chapter 14, use it at the very end when you're in the arena section and he has mutated, not before, as you will be wasting it. Talk about a near-death experience is to rescue Ashley as she's being carried away. This should come naturally, but this trophy can be achieved at the beginning of chapter 5, just as you exit the church. Wave Goodbye Right Hand asks you to defeat the Birdugo towards the end of chapter 10. Now, Mr. Birdugo here is what we in the industry call a bullet sponge. And to add to that, you just can't offload willy-nilly on him. Before you meet him, you will notice in the area four nitrogen pipes. You will need to lure him into those for maximum damage. It is pretty easy. Make sure he is chasing you, run toward the button, press it and move out of the way quickly as this can freeze you too. He will walk underneath getting frozen. When he is frozen, unload on him. If you are going to use the rocket launch on him, do it when he is frozen or you will be wasting the rocket. Shield your eyes. Defeat three enemies at once with a flashbang. This is extremely easy and can be achieved in chapter 3. While making your way to the lake, you will come across an opening that looks like it could be used for a boss fight. Nudge nudge, wink wink. In the middle, several crows. Make sure you have a flashbang on you, throw it in the middle of them, and Bob's your uncle. Never hear it coming. Defeat a Garador using only knives. The Garadors are the blind enemies with massive claws. The first one you encounter will be in Chapter 7. Crouch. Wait till he has calmed down, then sneak up behind him and press R2. You will need to do this 4 to 5 times. 2 bugs, 1 stone. Kill 2 parasites inside a regenerator with a single bullet. The regenerators in my opinion are the worst, most annoying and scariest enemies in game. During chapter 13 you will need to obtain a keycard. When you first see these mother effers, don't waste your bullets and or grenades because it is impossible to kill them. Yet. Just shoot them in the leg and move on. First of all, Make sure you have a sniper rifle in your inventory and second, you will know that you are about to run into them when you get to the merchant in the kitchen. Eventually, you will get to a room where you will see four regenerators in incubation cubes. Don't worry, they won't jump out. At the other end of the room, in a case, you will find the biosensor scope. Equip it to your rifle and now you will be able to see where the parasites are in the regenerators, therefore being able to finally take them out. So how to get the trophy? Well, in the same room, just look for one who has two parasites near each other and line up the shot. You talk too much. Throw a grenade into Ramon Salazar's mouth. At the end of chapter 12, you will face our annoying little air quotations friend. At the very start of the fight, he will be right in front of you. Make sure you have the grenade pre-equipped and aim for the mouth. If you miss, just restart the checkpoint. Overkill. Use a cannon to defeat a zealot. In chapter 7 you will have the situation where you will need to use a cannon to open the castle door, while being fired upon by another 3 cannons. This can get very hectic very fast, as other than the constant cannon siege you will face, 
enemies will be running behind you. Now this can be achieved here easily enough though with some hassle. But there is another cannon towards the end of chapter 8. Here, once you defeat the big boy, you need to turn the cannon to your left to shoot open another door. Conveniently in front of said door, bad guys. So choose where you think is best to get this. Hope you like thrill rides. Make it through both minecart sections without taking damage. This takes place in chapter 11 and is a bit of a pain in the ass to do. Best thing to do to make this less stressful, play it on casual or if you have the hunk mask unlocked, equip that. Go to settings, set aim assist to snap and follow and off you go. This makes life so much easier. Smooth escape is similar to the previous trophy. As you escape the island in chapter 16 with the jet ski, avoid everything and make sure that no damage befalls that jet ski as you will have to reload checkpoint. Best done on casual as you can take your time so to say. On the higher difficulties the countdown is reduced so you don't have much time to slow down. Capacity compliance. Reach the top of the clock tower without the lift stopping. Towards the end of chapter 12 and just before the Ramon Salazar boss fight you will need to get on a lift to reach the top. Enemies will spawn trying to jump on. The instant an enemy lands on the lift, the trophy is void. So if this happens, reload last autosave. Can be done in normal gameplay, but it is way easier when attempted with an infinite ammo weapon. FYI, while climbing up the stairs, if you pay attention at the back of the head of the statue, you will see a red barrel. Shoot that so that while you're climbing up, you don't get flame through it. And a bonus tip, just before you jump down to the lift, pull the lever to your left, if you time it right, as you start the lift, the death ball you have just unleashed will roll over the shaman dude, insta-analyving him. The more you know. Astute treasure. Sell a single treasure for at least 100,000 pesetas. To be able to do this, you need to find a crown. There are two in-game. One in chapter 11 and the other in chapter 13. During your collectible run, you will come across them. Just input the necessary gems and hey presto. The final three miscellaneous trophies can be found in the shooting range. Here you are required to complete one game at the range for amateur shooter, get an S rank on all 12 games for the real Deadeye and shoot through and destroy five targets for trickshot. You can tackle the shooting range as soon as it comes available or save it for the end as you are able to play all ranges at any time when you come across them in the later levels. They are not particularly hard to complete, but practice and muscle memory will play a big part. So that's your casual run complete. Before doing anything else, I would advise playing the Merchant Series mode to unlock the hand cannon and friend reminder you should have saved up a bunch of first aid sprays. From here, use your new game plus to go into professional mode. When you do a new game plus, you void the S rank, but here we are aiming for an A rank as this will unlock the Chicago Sweeper. Professional mode is the reason we have been stockpiling on first aid sprays. This mode is no joke. I would also suggest you ticket your magnum as this will give you infinite ammo and it will make this mode more bearable. Though it must be said that the accuracy for the weapon is ass. You can literally miss an enemy who is point blank in front of you. To get an A rank in professional you need to complete the game in under 7 hours. Once professional is complete, apart from the Chicago Sweeper, you will unlock armor for Ashley, which means that enemies cannot carry her off and that you can't accidentally offer with misplaced gunfire or grenades. With your newfound toys, we will now take on S plus ranks for hardcore and standard. S plus rank in hardcore is achieved by completing the game in under 5 hours and 30 minutes. To make this more achievable, I recommend the following. First, Make sure to equip the armor for Ashley. Use the Chicago Sweeper and ticket it so that you have infinite ammo. There are two ways to do this. By doing merchant's request so you can buy a ticket for 30 spinels, this should be achieved by chapter 7, or the other way which is to purchase a ticket from the PSN store with real money. The cost for this is around 3 euros, so not too expensive, and this way when you meet the merchant in chapter 2, you can ticket the sweeper getting infinite ammo from the get-go and saving valuable time that is needed. Another very important note, when you're going for the speedruns, when you die, 
exit to the main menu and then load your last save point. Because when you die, if you click continue or load game, the timer does not reset. When hardcore S plus rank is achieved, the chicken hat will be unlocked. This reduces the damage taken. From here, jump into standard and get its S plus rank. You have 5 hours to do this, but it should be done by 4. Ok, stop to take a breather, crack those knuckles and neck, and prepare yourself for professional S plus rank. Now, there is no trophy for getting S plus rank, but we are gunning for a very important accessory, the cat ears. When equipped, they give any gun infinite ammo, and this will come in very handy for the final runs. So, chicken hat equipped, and sweeper ticketed, let's jump into professional S plus. To achieve this, you must complete the game in 5 hours and 30 minutes, and you can only save 15 times. In the description, I will leave an article informing of the best places to save. By the time this is all done, there should only be 3 outstanding trophies. Frugalist, complete the main story without using a healing item. Minimalist, complete the main story using only knives and handguns. You can't use magnums, they will void the trophy nor grenades or flashbangs. And Silent Stranger, complete the main story without talking to the merchant. If planned correctly, all three can be achieved in one run. Go into a new game plus for this. After all the hiking through the countryside and experiencing different cultures is complete, you should be the proud owner of an ultra rare 3.3% platinum trophy. So is Resident Evil 4 platinum worth getting? Well, Capcom have definitely knocked it out of the park when it comes to this remake of the beloved 2005 game. Very few sections or sequences have been cut, and so much more has been added or improved. The shooting feels amazing, weapons give off that sound and blowback that never gets boring. Dialogue in RE games has always been cheesy, but here the story and characters have been brushed up, though one or two villains could have been flushed out more and have additional time in the spotlight. Also, the sudden change from action adventure to survival horror is amazing. One moment you are John wicking your way through enemies and when the dust has settled, you realize that you're in a dark lit area and something is hunting you. Trophies are not at all complicated per se, but one or two might get on your nerves. The first professional run I did find frustrating and that affected my enjoyment for the game, though I attribute this to my lack of experience with the game at that time. The Resident Evil Remakes trophies all follow a similar pattern, some more easier and others harder. Here it is clear to see that the trophies were designed to stretch out the game the maximum possible and I feel to the detriment of the game. Although the game is an instant masterpiece and a benchmark when it comes to remakes, there is only so many times it can be replayed in quick succession before the enjoyment is sucked away and the platinum becomes a chore. Resident Evil 4, though a definite must buy, when aiming for the platinum you will start to feel a weight on your shoulders. Resident Evil 4's platinum is a 7 out of 10. Thank you for watching and making it this far, I hope you found this video helpful. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, as this helps the channel to grow. While you're at it, hit that like button, drop a comment, and I'll see you all next time, stranger.